Shit is like two days. Do you like to be the first to walk into her? So me and my family are in Colorado for the week. We're staying with some family, and my wife's sister's husband's brother is actually the shop teacher at the local high school. So I'm going to get on my bike, and I'm gonna go pay him a visit. He's gonna give me a tour of the shop. So let's go check it out. It's supposed to rain, so we'll see if I can get there before it does. So real quick before we jump in, I just wanna let you know that this wasn't really like a planned out interview slash tour. It was kind of a spur of the moment thing. And when I got there, I really just wanted to focus on what Corbin had to say and actually seeing the wood shop. So at times the camera might be a little bit shaky, but I think the content is, is still pretty good. So I'm gonna chime in here throughout the rest of the video and just provide some additional context as we go through. So enjoy. A shop split. 50-50, metal shop on that side, wood shop on this side. So when my uh, dad first came here, he was actually the metal shop teacher and then moved to the wood shop and he designed this one actually. And his big thing, he like wanted, um, a, so he put these like windows and stuff here because he, uh, it was during a time where a lot of schools were cutting programs and he thought if it went down to one teacher instead of two he could potentially do both sides oh and, interesting and with like the windows and stuff it was like that for like one year not while he was here when i was in high school my wood shop teacher actually got fired and so the metal shop teacher taught both sides so there were two classes going on at the same time so he would just use these windows over here to be like all right yeah, no one's cutting any fingers off over here all right let's focus on the metal side yeah crazy <laughs> And our freshmen do a general shop class, which I think is really cool. They don't choose woods or metal. Um, they spend half the year over here yep. building this, and then they come to the wood shop. When I went to high school here, that wasn't a thing. So as a freshman, you kind of had to decide. And this, I think, is cool because all of our freshmen will know how to weld and they'll know how to use almost every tool in here and every tool in the wood shop, and then they can decide. This kind of uh, our classroom, I guess, so to say, but we mainly use it for project planning and drafting. We spend the first half of the year doing um, mechanical drafting mm -hmm. and drawing just the small things, do a lot of board drafting and then go into like SketchUp and then we move into second semester architectural. So then Corbin took me into the wood shop and what I thought was super interesting is that the layout hasn't changed in over 30 years. Now, personally speaking, I'm always reorganizing my shop to improve my efficiency, but with the high school wood shop, they take a different approach to how things are laid out. So this is the wood shop. This is the wood shop. It, uh, it's not all that different than how it was when my dad was here. Actually, we tried to organize it and I guess we kind of call it like safety tolerances. So like everything over here is stuff you can get your hands fairly close to. Your okay. lathes, your drill press. Yep. And then uh, like your joiner and your table saw. It's like the six inch zone. You got to yep. get your fingers six inches away. And then over here are um, miter saw probably the most sketchy thing it turns out <laughs> in a school setting. So what you didn't see is that they have this really, really nice 15 inch grizzly planer. And I was asking him about it and he told me that it doesn't get that much use because of this giant time saver that they have. It's ultimately like a, a giant drum sander and they, they find that they use that more often than the planer just because of the width capacity. And I was also curious if he's ever had people outside of the school to come and ask him if they could use that machine. Have you ever had anyone like outside of school that was working on something that knew that you had this here and they're like, can I just take it here to run it through yeah. your time saver for? Out of all the tools we have, the thing I get called on the most is definitely the really? time saver. People are like, so, you know, our kid comes <laughs> in, my dad's doing a river table, can we? And they're like, you know, sure, bring uh, it in. Yeah. And when students are in their junior year, they have some requirements on the projects that they need to make. Specifically, it either needs to have a door or a drawer. And to help construct the doors, they have four router tables set up in the shop to help with the process. Uh, my router tables I have set up, but I try to set this up to make a raised panel door. So oh, okay. they start here and go in a circle. It finishes with the door. They do this cut here. Do that one here. On that nice little jig there. A little backer piece so it yep. reduces any of the, the tear out. Yep, and then after they do those pieces and then come over here and cut their yep, groove for the groove. panel yep. on this guy. And then the big panel bit 
They have multiple ways to do it. So this one is this guy. So it'll go through and cut it. You'll actually send it this way though, right? So it goes through that. They have other ones where you would send it this way. And it's a little bit nicer because your blade isn't that big. It becomes a tall, yeah, skinny blade. Yeah. So it doesn't have quite as much momentum. For like woodworking professionals, a smaller bit's safer for kids. I have two of these bits and I normally have it where this takes off just half. Yep. And then they come over here and take and off. And they do all the other. The so other you're not half. doing the so, whole thing through one. Because it's a lot oh, of meat awesome. to take in so one. That's what you would need. Hmm. Yep. And they also have not one, but two saw stops. And with saw stop safety feature where it can sense, you know, a finger touching the blade and immediately locks up, it only makes sense to have that specific model in a high school wood shop. So you guys got a saw stop. Yep, so we got two saw stops. Any triggers since? I've had one and I'll probably, I'll take blame for it. <laughs> I have it set up actually too so that this, they do dados okay. on this guy. Yep. Because the only downfall for me with the saw stop is it takes longer to change the blades. And so when I have 45 minute class periods, if someone's changing a normal blade to a dado, it takes the saw for the whole period. No one can use it. Because really? you know, by the time they change, make their dado cut yeah. and put the normal one back on, class period's over. So I decided this was my dado and that's my normal. Yeah, okay. let's just set it three quarter uh, mainly for like our plywood shelves or our cabinets. Okay. Sometimes we'll still use this for like the rabbits on our drawers and just okay. set the fence to where it doesn't yep. totally take off. Yeah, so the, the one saw I had, uh, stop I had go off, something was going out in this and sometimes you turn it on and the blade would go make a sound and wouldn't kick on. And if you shut it off and you twisted the blade like that, it fixed it and I had a kid and you know, it went and the blade's not spinning but he didn't shut it off so he grabbed it to oh, spin it. Oh, and, and then it locked up. <laughs> locked up. <laughs> this is one that went off before I got here. It, you can't even get this off the blade. This uh, student in particular is very, very fortunate to have a saw stop. He was using a sled, wasn't paying attention, and pushed the sled with this hand and the blade came Ugh. through the sled and hit him right here, which would be a terrible spot to cut yourself. But, but it locked up. Locked up. Man. He, it didn't even draw blood. Oh, didn't man. even draw blood. And throughout the years, they've built all of these various cross-cut sleds that they store on a cart right next to the table saw. But yeah, we have like a straight one. I got a 45, yep. I got a 60. Um, this cuts like miter uh, for like picture frames. Yep. So it holds the piece at a 45 oh, nice. instead of... Uh, so then yeah. you could probably put some clamps on the sides just to yep. have them And then, good. Um, oh, this is a 10 inch 10 in jig. jig. And this guy is, um, I had it actually, a student this year make finger joints at an angle. Oh. So this holds it at an angle and then you run it through um, the dado thing over say, here. Yeah, you have and to make it registers. Sure that, that one is exactly three quarters of an inch, slide it over. Yep. And oh, so then you sick. had these legs that fingered but also came out at an angle. Yep. And then this guy is for uh, splines, like in a box yep. or something. Yep. So hold it at an angle and mm -hmm. we. Lines with that guy. And don't worry, they use hand tools as well, which were all stored in this giant cabinet. Actually, the freshmen aren't even allowed to use power tools just yet. They need to practice and learn with hand tools first. And Corbin explains a little bit as to why that is. My freshmen have to, um, their first project is 100% hand tools. And the reason I do that is because I feel like you understand wood more that way. Like you're trying to tell kids, against the grain and all these terms and they're like kind of not registering it and then you give them a hand plane and they go and then they flip the board around and they go, and they go oh. oh yeah <laughs> um i think it's just something about hand tools that it, the kids get really frustrated but they also start to learn so what would they them. make with it their hand tool project is, is uh this coasters they can choose which base oh, nice. they want to make yep and that scrap i pull out of my scrap bin yep and they glue it up and it's all different thicknesses and they got to hand plane that and drill those holes and that's yeah all hand tools and oh, that's uh, nice. that little uh hand crank drill press you can imagine comes real important especially for this space yeah because you want for to, to sit it. flat yeah i have kids that get impatient waiting for that and they try to do it with the uh old yeah, school yeah. hand th and it's just like crooked as all <laughs> it could be. And they have this giant lumber storage room which is a million times better than this mess that I got going on back here. I'll deal with that eventually. Yes, yeah, so we got alder, poplar, cherry, oak, red oak, pine, hickory, 
maple, walnut, cedar, wormy maple. They spend the first semester after doing safety, we'll do like skills tests. They'll make like picture frame, mm -hmm. but every corner has to be a different wood joint. Then they spend like a couple months planning. They draft their project. We have a bill of materials they go through and they try to calculate how much wood they need, mm -hmm. how much that wood will cost. And then they pay 50% of what their project would cost at the beginning of the year. They build it, and then at the end of the year, they pay the other 50%. So far, we've talked about the history of the building, uh, the classroom, how the wood shop is organized, the different tools in there, the routers, the table saws, the hand tools. And before we talk about the end of the year fair, here are a few other things that I thought were really cool. So Corbin also showed me that he has a shaper origin kind of tucked away in one of the rooms. And he mentioned that he's gonna introduce it to his students, but first they need to learn about all of the general and tool safety for all of the other tools that they have in the wood shop. They also have a finishing room, which is closed off from the rest of the shop, and it even has a built-in exhaust system. He also showed me a student's hand-drawn plans for an entertainment system, and I was super impressed about how detailed that was, especially being hand-drawn. And then we took a look at the dust collection system. So everything is built into the shop, and it all gets deposited to a big barrel outside of the building. Corbin's mentioned a few times that his dad was the wood shop teacher for 30 years. So your dad was the, the shop teacher? Yep. Okay. For and you said- 30 I went, years. For 30 years. Yeah. Wow. At one point, they, they're, well, he taught here for 30 years. I think one year in the metal shop, Yep. 29 years in the wood shop. Wow. And sadly, Corbin's dad is no longer with us. I think it's awesome that Corbin's carrying on the legacy, but he did mention that he's got some pretty big shoes to fill specifically referring to the end of year fair. And that's a time when all of the students get the chance to show off the projects that they've built throughout the year and all of the families come and they all take a look and, and see all of their work. But tons of like beds with underdressers and uh, yeah, the stuff. So it was, I think probably disappointing for most people in the community, but I felt Oh, pretty good about it. <laughs> Corbin actually sent me a bunch of photos from one of the previous fairs. And we're gonna end the video with a quick little slideshow on all of the students' projects.